Hey guys, welcome to another episode from Stacy. Here We Grow Again. Today we're outside and I just wanted to go over some tips on keeping your garden healthy throughout all seasons. No matter what you're growing in, what climate you're in, we are in Florida, Zone 9B, and that is Central Florida. So a lot of things grow all year long here and the seasons are actually pretty funky. They've been really late and um, my blueberries actually flowering this is my blackberry and she's just been growing so vigorously you can see and i'm getting some caterpillars this is caterpillar damage you now you got some caterpillar creeping around when you get that and uh, you just want to make sure you treat with some neem oil organic neem oil is what i use and it's really healthy for the environment and just the plants in itself you can see the nice healthy green foliage we have all the leaves kind of have their own space we pulled it out from over back there because we were just getting too much shade over there as you can see and these just really need a lot of sun right now this is my sunshine blue blueberry and look at her guys she's producing so many blooms she's getting really big and i did not prune the blooms off the first few years of having her which is fine um you know i just encourage you to do that within the first few years because you know you're going to take the flowers off which in turn you're not going to get blueberries but you're gonna your plant's going to be focusing on the um foliage growth and the root growth instead of the you know producing the fruit or you can just leave it like i did <laughs> i didn't know i had to prune these in the beginning and you can see i moved it in the sun and all these little cute blueberries are pollinating they're uh, ripening from the sun they turn like a nice purplish reddish color and from green and then um this is how they start out and then they uh start turning blue and they get really ripe and you can see we just have tons all over her all these little flower clumps are going to turn into blueberries so that's awesome we got a bunch starting all in here all down here and i just wanted to show you that you know the foliage tends to turn red in the winter time if it turns red like this in the summer it means that you're probably lacking some fertilizer but in the winter time this is how they turn they look gorgeous so they're bright greenish bluish foliage in the summer and then in the winter when we get cooler temps which hasn't really been quite frequently here in florida we're actually at 80 degrees these past few days we just got a cold front last night so that's why these are starting to turn and look how pretty they are but we're getting blooms all over it and i know she's going to be happy and um you know this is how they start out they start out with these nice pretty plink pink blooms and then bell out into little bells like that this is how they first start so pretty right and then they um push out them white bells and then that white bell pollinates itself they're self-pollinators and turned into a lovely blueberry so i just wanted to give you guys a little update on her she's doing great and uh just some things growing in the garden this little butterfly plant here you can see she's growing nice foliage on her and she actually died off from the cold we had a few weeks ago. So you can see the, the foliage that is brown on it. And that's normal. This is going to go dormant in, in the wintertime and not be pushing out so many blooms. So we got healthy new growth because of the crazy weather we've been getting. You know, we, we jumped to 80 degrees for a few weeks at least here. So I'm going to prune up all the dead. Any dead like this you want to get rid of no matter where it's at. You know, you always want to remove dead leaves. Anything that looks funky, not green. I only leave green foliage on my plants. Nice healthy flowers. All these little spent ones I actually take off of here. And um, that's it. When they're all spent, I pop them off and you're good to go. Always remember to defoliate your plants. Take off any dead that you might be getting because it really encourages this new healthy growth to start pushing out. This is my strawberry we're growing here and these are growing here in Florida like crazy. We actually live in Plant City and Plant City is where most of your strawberries come from. They come from our place here where we live. This is Strawberry Town and you can see just how big these strawberries start to pollinate and start growing. Now sometimes you get a perfect one like this. Sometimes you get a funky one, but guess what? This is still going to be edible. It's still pollinated. It's still growing. We got a lot more new growth up in the center here popping out, which I see in a lot more new flowers, more flowers on this side. So we know she's happy. She's doing good. She needs some food here once every few weeks or so at all purpose 
fertilizer high in phosphorus potassium is great and um, I just broke that little flower off it looks like something got to half of it anyway <laughs> that's okay we'll grow more and um, just remember to keep them sprayed with neem oil these get powdery mildew like crazy and to keep your garden healthy in general make sure you're always spraying on like a preventative treatment for your garden once every few weeks or so depending on where you live so you know that's going to depend on how much you need to spray we have like radishes growing in a container here little broccoli sprouting cute and then um i wanted to show you that you can utilize your containers in your garden so you know keeping your garden healthy this is these peas right here that are producing these gorgeous pods which are pretty much ready let me see right here you can see when they get nice and fat like this all the way through that is a perfect pea these are alaskan peas and this is ready to pick so i'm going to harvest a few of these today and the way you want to do it is cut right in the middle of the stem that it comes off of you don't want to cut the stem it's coming out of you just want to cut in the middle of the stem right here right above this fruit and that's it, or vegetable, I should say. And these two are completely done. They're really fat and healthy. And then these are going to be right behind it. So we got a few more behind them. You can see they fattened up right away after they, they start growing. So a uh, few more ready to come here. And we prune off any dead. And this one actually broke. You can see it broke off to the side right here. So I tied it up, but all these are just not growing right. They're kind of growing funky, these flowers. So I'm going to cut this off. So if you get like a broken stem like right here on my pea, I'm just going to pop that off right there. Look how easy it came off. This way it doesn't stall these green beans out because they're still going to produce a lot of foliage. Especially down here, they vine out to the other side as well and start pushing out beans as well. You can see them all up there. And um, I also like to plant... And utilize my containers by planting lettuce and stuff inside of it with it you just want to make sure when you're keeping your garden clean and when i say that and defoliating your plants see if i can get a good picture you can see i have quite a few lettuce growing in here so this lettuce you know we have a broken leaf so see this leaf is kind of off to this side and it's growing from this way so what i usually do is carefully bend it back see where it belongs and then i pop it off if it's dead I pop off the bottom because what, how this lettuce grows, especially this black seeded Simpson, you can see it kind of stalks up. So see how big that stalk is getting? It's growing out and it's, it's actually starting to stick straight up and grow into a head because it's becoming mature. So all this bottom stuff, you definitely want to utilize if it's good. If it's brown, I usually throw it away, but these are perfect. So we're going to utilize a lot of these leaves on here and um, just, you know, get rid of, like, this is where it's growing from. You can see that's the stem. Get rid of, like, this guy down here and pick all the way up. That's to that plant, but uh, pick all the way up till you get a nice clean stalk up to where this is starting to grow clumpy because this is going to be your nice full head of lettuce we could even take this one off if we wanted to in this one because all this is going to do is really encourage this top growth to stick up and start growing upwards so you don't have lettuce falling into each other like we have over here we have a few and they're just starting to stick straight up so i like to remove any ones that are growing into each other utilize your lettuce anything you're picking always utilize what you're growing out in the garden you know never waste your produce you work hard to do it and um you know that's just it guys that's how i prune my plants this way nice new foliage can start from the center here and start branching out and this lettuce is being utilized in this container with my peas because the peas are actually providing nutrients to that lettuce we have a bunch of Celery growing, I mean, um, carrots growing back there. Peppers still growing here. And just remember, always look throughout your garden. Make sure everything is clean. Make sure you're not getting bugs. Make sure everything's growing the way it's supposed to, not flopping over. Things are flopping down or don't seem to be blooming right on you. Make sure you go ahead and give them some nutrients or whatever they might need. Peas and green beans and stuff like that do not need much nutrients in the garden. They actually provide their own nitrogen fixers and stuff. As long as you have a nice, rich, organic soil to start out with, these guys are going to grow just fine. You can see all the peas are starting to produce their pretty flowers. And um, now's the time to be planting your new set. 
So we've got more peas growing here, which we planted a few weeks ago. And they're getting really big and growing. And uh, these you just want to keep well watered, not over watered, because they tend to get a little root rot. But uh, you can grow peas here in green beans in uh, December, January. We started these a few months ago, and you can see we're getting beans. So you can grow a lot all year long. Bees aren't really meant to be growing right now, um, but you sure can. This goes to show you, just go by what's growing in your climate right now, how your climate's doing. And honestly, the weather guy told me that we're not going to get a frost date here. Probably only one frost date in the next few months. So what I did was, since these green beans were all done, these were my Kentucky Wonder Poles, I have two containers getting ready here. I left some lettuce in the front. I'm starting to pick my beans. I have radish in the front here, which are growing and getting really big. I've been checking on them consistently to make sure that they are growing properly and just getting big like they're supposed to. You can see they're almost done. So we're planting new radishes all over the garden. And then um, these beans are coming out because they're done. These have been growing for a while. So um, October, I think, we planted these up in here. And... Um, they're done. We've gotten a lot of beans off of them, so I haven't noticed that they've been growing a lot. They haven't been giving me produce. Um, the leaves are starting to branch out a little bit and fine, but it's not enough. You know, you're not going to get a lot of produce off of it. So I'm just taking them off from the bottom up, pulling off all these vines, and we're going to plant more. So since now is really usually between January and February, I don't like planting green beans because we do get cooler weather and green beans really love hot weather to grow in. Um, they can grow in cooler weather like here in Florida where we get a lot of hot weather all year long. We don't really get a cold, but for the most part, they really like hot weather. Springtime is great to grow these in. So I'm just going to go ahead and take these off. They're really tough too. And then I'm going to compost them. Throw these in your compost. They're healthy. There's no bugs. There's no fungus, which is probably going to kill it off anyway in your compost pile. So you can go ahead and throw this in your compost. I'm going to continue to do this. They're really tough because they twine around, but that's okay. Get what you can. Get it all off so we can get ready to plant some more stuff up here. So excited we're planting. Now is the time to be planting in Florida. Get ready for your, for your February crop into the spring. It's a great time to do that. Cottage garden growing, getting big. And I want to show you by removing dead. So I removed a lot of the dead on the bottom. Nothing's touching the soil. And that's going to prevent bugs from infesting your garden. This is a cottage garden mixture, which usually comes back year after year. And these two little guys are touching the ground. So I take these off. Any leaves that are touching the ground, I like to get off. And you can see, look how healthy that looks now. This one, you know, we're going to take this little rinky-dink guy on the bottom, touch in. This one on the bottom. And that little guy. And look how much cleaner and prettier this looks, guys. And then this will encourage new healthy growth to start growing out of the centers of all this. So my other plants, you know, these touch in the ground, I like to get rid of them. Because they are going to end up dying off eventually. Look how easy they pull off. Get rid of anything touching the floor. The soil. Because that's going to encourage bugs to crawl up on your plants. And we don't want that. And I'm just getting the rest of my garden ready guys. I got this all tilled out yesterday. Ready to go. Peppers planted up. Which I probably should have waited for a few more months to pass by at least. Because at least a few more weeks. Because we're getting this cold front. But that's okay. They'll be fine. We're going to plant some radishes. I'll cover those if I have to. And then um, we'll plant radishes. That's a cool weather vegetable. Radishes, peas, lettuce, um, you know, cabbage, broccoli, eggplant types. They can all be grown this time of year and you don't have to worry about frost. Carrots, those are carrots doing really well. And I'm going to interplant. So since all these popped up and they are pushing out nice foliage, what I like to do at this point is just plant around them. So I'll put one here, I'll put one here, and I'll probably plant a whole row in this middle. And they'll have their own space. Carrots only need about that, that few inches between each other. So I'll go ahead and plant in between here. Now that these are popping up, this way by the time these are done, my other carrots will be right behind it. And you have a continual harvest. 
You always want to plant even rows. This way you know what you have. And you always want to plant every two weeks with bean, I mean, um, lettuce, radish, beets, uh, your radishes. Because you're going to be picking them quite frequently. And you always want backup to come behind them. And then uh, for my radish here, I usually only prune the bottom first set. So this first set isn't really a true set of leaves. And I like to take those off or anything touching the ground. Now radishes, beets, anything that grows underneath the ground really needs a lot of leaf growth to grow. So these, um, you know, really require a lot of nutrients, a lot of nitrogen, a lot of phosphorus, potassium, just equal parts nutrients all the way around. Um, once every few weeks and you'll be fine because these carrots grow underneath the ground and the radish grow underneath the ground. So they, they grow off of the foliage. So having good amount of foliage for your carrots and radishes and stuff like that is a really good thing to have. Now pumpkin and peppers, stuff like that, you really want to back off on the nitrogen during the blooming stages and only concentrate on phosphorus and potassium because, you know, they don't need that much nitrogen and you're just going to end up with a bunch of leaf growth and no fruit. So same thing with my blueberries, my blackberries, uh, peppers, just everything else that I'm growing that is growing above the soil. Even broccoli. We're going to grow broccoli bed. So this is all I removed, guys. I just wanted to show you that so it plumps them back up to stick straight up. And this way I don't get any diseases on this foliage touching the floor. You know, you'll see in the long run, it'll be a lot healthier, a lot cleaner. You won't have to give so many nutrients all the time. So much, um, you know, pest control all the time. If you just keep your garden weeded. You can see all them terrible weeds back here, which I'm getting to. Just haven't been feeling too good with this cough. Till next time, guys. You will probably see some broccoli planted up in the garden. I'll be showing you some videos on that. I want my celery back here. That is another great thing to be growing right now. Broccoli, cauliflower, um, kale, spinach even, and um, just a bunch of other stuff. And I'm going to go over some new seeds we got for, for the garden. My lovely fiancé got me some new seeds. So we're going to be going over that for you guys real soon here. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video and have a great day and just get inspired to grow some produce of your own. Be out in your garden, check it, make sure everything's growing properly. And since this is blooming right now, this blueberry and pushing out fruit, I really need to make sure it has enough water, enough food, and this soil is staying acidic. Blueberries really like acidic soil. This is sunshine blue variety and it's blooming so late. It's not supposed to be blooming right now, but it is. So we got to take care of it and give it what it needs. And um, just go, go by what your plant is doing at that time in the season. Sometimes you're late, sometimes you're early. So just go by what's happening around your area and you should be fine with growing whatever it is you might want to grow. Thank you so much for watching. As always, happy planting. Please remember to like and subscribe if you haven't already and give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Bye-bye.